And I would like now to get first a little bit into the idea of architecture. I've been trying to tell this to many architects, also students, and hardly anybody understands what we're talking about because we are really fully talking about the system change. Yeah, even students that, that took a seminar time to work on designs, being accompanied by us, on the one hand, obviously we are not able to communicate exactly what we want, and on the other hand, it's such a system change that it appears to be very obvious, but if you really think deeply into it, then it's something totally different. And as everywhere, the architecture of the future will look totally different than it is nowadays due to the system change that we need to do. So, the basic idea is multiple zone architecture. Building layers until you're fully out in nature. And until that step, everything is house. Everything is housing. Yeah? So, um, also connected to the thought line that us humans, we want to reconnect to nature, inviting also animals part way in, providing space for them, for example, for bats or for birds or for frogs, for snakes, for rats, we also even have to provide space. Big issue around animals coming closer. We have our greenhouse here at the place and every now and then um, the sea otter comes and visits us. This idea was um, brought up by Martin Peach, an architect that is here on the place. And we then, in the building group that have been here for several years, brought it forward. And actually, right now we are not allowed to build, but as soon as we are, we would like to build one example building in that style and manner so that people can really see. We have gathered throughout the years, the last decade, so many different informations on what that would look like and how we would love it to be, um, that we are now pretty much on the stage where we could actually plan a house like that. <coughs> and one example I just brought is the greenhouse. So the dream of this kind of building, it is also connected to community. So now I'm more speaking into community area, area that means always also bigger sizes and more people living together than just one small family, which makes it more evident. But of course you can also apply it to small family houses. Um, so imagine a community house where you have like a central inner heart that is being fully insulated and sheltered that you can heat easily and then and these are the rooms that where you need heating in in the winter time where you know for example assembly rooms they need to be warm and cozy sleeping rooms also for some people others don't like it anyway so some people sleeping rooms kitchen is also always a, an intermediate state which could fit into a greenhouse and also into a full heated thing so this you also have to find out, yeah, which are the needs that you yourself have. And then you come up with a, with a certain number of square meters. Shower is also a thing that could very good also fit into a well-insulated greenhouse, as we just heard. Yeah? And then you take the next step out, you're in this um, winter garden system. That means well-insulated greenhouses. Yeah? where you have plants, where you, where you can grow your food, but where you also can have your office desk. Imagine having your office desk at, in a greenhouse yeah, that has a beautiful climate. It's beautiful. Yeah. Very, very interesting. We are always outside. You, you connect the, the pathways in between with growing food at the sides, yeah? in greenhouses. Then you have the next stage, which would be, would be not non-insulated greenhouses that are just very simple, like the ones that we have. The stage after that would be just sheltered for rain and wind, and then totally open, shade roofs. And that, that way you create a surrounding of your house 
where you live throughout the day and move to the areas that you can use throughout day and throughout periods throughout the year. It also changes, of course, because of the climate. But um, when we calculated it for this place here, we came up with uh, around a third. A third would be fully insulated, one third would be winter gardens, another third would be um, just greenhouses or shade roofs outside. And that way we would cut the cost of a house by two-thirds. Because winter gardens and <coughs> houses and just shade roofs, they are just much more <coughs> less expensive than building a whole insulated thing. And you would have an improvement in life quality at the same time. And also, you know, it would be much better earthquake proof. Lightweight structures. Lightweight structures is. and straw bear housing are yeah. very good for earthquakes. We are sure. also living in an earthquake area here. So um, now I can come more to the ecological side, which we can then also take a few looks at. Um, we went on the, on the line of straw bear building here in Tamara, and we pretty much stick with it because that is just a local material that grows on the neighbor's land and you can put up your houses beautifully. They are much better insulated than you would actually need it, but that doesn't matter so much because you have the material that is there and it's produced that way. And um, we built several different strawberry houses on the place. The, the biggest one is the Aula which you probably already know. One is our office, it's the Hogan, that is in the back behind the kitchen there. It's a low-cost strawberry building. The Aula we built with a lot of helpers that are non-skilled helpers. That is also a great thing about strawberry building. If you pile them up on top of one another, as long as you have a few persons that know how the details need to look like, you can, everybody can help that has two arms. And um, then we went on another kind of building which are the workshop areas. Up there it's the herbal house and the sewing workshop. And these were made by a company that came here. We also joined them working. And they prefabricated the parts of the walls with the straw beds on the ground. Prefabrication, spraying the first layer of, um, of, of earth on it as plaster and then putting it up with a crane. That is a, if, if, you, do a, if you do it with skilled people and, um, you, and the wages are very high, that's the way to do it. Beautiful houses, of course, they are um, built in a way that they would be low energy houses. That means up to modern knowledge, you try to seal the inside that no airflow, no unwanted airflow comes through. And that means like very little gaps, like five millimeters gaps will change the insulation of your house dramatically. That we know these days. So you really have to make sure that everything is done very well, that you only get fresh air when you open the window, and not all the time. Basically like this. You can look at them, they're both, the, the houses up there are both heated just by the solar panels on the, on the roof. They're not very much directed towards the sun, towards capturing sunlight or even with winter gardens or anything in front. But along through the solar panels, they are pretty much heated throughout the winter. Only if our elders want to have it really cozy in the winter, they throw in a piece of wood in the fireplace and that's it. The, um, the feeling in such a house when you insulate it and you have a clay plaster inside, it's very nice. It's like something totally different than um, working with the normal building materials because it, it breathes, it takes in moisture, it keeps a certain, uh, yeah, it keeps a certain mood in the air. And I mean, then I can come 
to other issues which are also very interesting if you speak terms of architecture is the social behavior of humankind and how do rooms have to be set up in a way that social interaction takes place and that yeah and this is a, this could actually be a science of the future because it is so interesting how we behave you would normally not not realize it you would always normally think different there are like two examples that i would bring for that for example we love to build in a round space and have an open round space in the middle yeah if you do this in a certain certain size even though the the space in the middle is very big as soon as one person is in there the whole place is used is used up if you want to come in you have to make contact to that person or you cannot you cannot enter yeah it, it really restricts the thing and it's, it's the funny thing because we have this picture of rounding a space would be a nice idea and would gain area and place but it's not that way it's the other way around you lose place if you do this if you do it like we have it out here very little different corners that all have their own space in every space something different can happen people are not interfering with each other but can make contact if they want to but they do not necessarily have to many people at the small place that were 30 people on 200 square meters actually and uh, we were having a fireplace outside in the winter time and of course you make a fireplace you have your house you have your garden in front you make your fireplace in the middle of the garden or somewhere there so we did it we had in the la in the years one two three times fire in the in the winter there then it was nice but it's really like very rare so one time we moved the fireplace into the hallway into the pathway where people would need to go through and we had fire every night and every night where people sitting there and talking and having interesting talks and these are things that you also if you think of architecture that are very very important because these are the envelopes that we build for our own social behavior and being and well-being yeah. so it's and then integrating of course the ever since i heard you talking about his ideas how to capture energy and so on i always pictured it to be within architecture and yeah. i think that is such a beautiful combination that can take place there very easily and so i'm looking forward to to think about it. i also know it's very extremely complex you have it's the complexity of such a building it's immense but it's also joyful <laughs>